welcome to the Creative Piano Teaching Podcast, the place where teachers from around the world meet to share innovative ideas about music education. Listen and learn as we help you motivate your students, grow your income, expand your studio, and become a more creative piano teacher. G'day everyone and welcome back to the Creative Piano Teaching Podcast. You're listening to episode number 107 and if you're one of my Inner Circle Piano Teaching community members, a very special welcome to you. My name is Tim Topham, your host for the show and if this is your first time here, thanks so much for tuning in. It means a lot to me that you're listening today and I definitely recommend you subscribe because we're just starting a new theme this month all about playing by ear and oral work. So all about listening, skills, singing and doing all those kinds of off-page things. So make sure you do subscribe. You can do that either through iTunes or just making sure that you're on my email list. The Creative Piano Teaching Podcast is the place where you can get weekly inspiration, ideas, business and teaching strategies to help support your teaching and grow your studio. Today's podcast, as I said, is the first in our new monthly theme, and it's all about how I teach pop songs to students with no music, simply by listening and singing and making connections to or uh, to theory and also to chord structure, keys and scales and things like that. It's a technique that you can apply to any song that a student wants to learn, and it was originally broadcast as a Facebook Live video as part of my repertoire rap series. Today's show notes and transcript are available at timtopham.com. Slash episode 107. This episode of the Creative Piano Teaching Podcast is proudly sponsored by the Casio Selviano Grand Hybrid Piano. The Grand Hybrid brings you refined sound, accurate touch, and a completely natural piano playing experience in a digital instrument. To create their entry into the hybrid piano market, Casio has collaborated with renowned acoustic piano manufacturer C. Beckstein in Germany. With Casio's strength and experience in digital technology, combined with C. Beckstein's understanding of acoustic piano design, the Selviano is one of the first truly affordable hybrid pianos. We've all heard of hybrid cars, of course, that combination of petrol and electric motors offering the best of both worlds. Well, for hybrid pianos, you get, of course, the acoustic grand piano action with the response and feel that you would associate with that, and also the benefits of a digital piano, such as it never needs tuning. You can move it around the house without paying for piano movers. You can use headphones, even two sets at once. Easy to connect via USB for apps and recording. You can split the keyboard, layer sounds, play along. You name it, these instruments can do it. But the most important thing is they feel and they sound like you are playing a real grand piano. I've been playing a Selviano Grand Hybrid for a number of months in my studio in preparation for review, and I'm incredibly impressed, and so are my students actually, not only only with the action and sound, but also the affordable price point starting at around $5,000. So visit soundtechnology.com.au for more information and you can click where to buy there to search for where you can go and test one out today. So today's podcast is all about teaching a pop song with no music. In fact, this could work for any piece of music that a student hears. It doesn't necessarily have to be pop, although I'm demonstrating it with a pop song because when I recorded this original video uh, on Facebook, I just had a student come in wanting to learn this song. So why would you take this approach? Why not get the music? Well, Uh, Sometimes, of course, you can't find the music, Uh, but more importantly, I actually like this method because it improves your students' ears and their ability to listen and play things that they hear, which is a fundamental skill that is often missed in traditional lessons. The other thing is that you can connect the things that students need to learn about theory and scales and keys and chords, and you'll hear me doing this in this recording, They'll be able to make the connection between those theoretical aspects with music that they enjoy and like. So, for example, in this song, when we get to uh, playing the little melodic piano riff by ear, it helps for the student to know what key they're in and therefore what sharps and flats will be likely notes in the melody. So those kind of connections I think are so important and it's why I'm very much against splitting up our lessons into small segments of, okay, now we're going to do some oral work, now we're going to do some sight reading, now we're going to talk about general knowledge. 
it much better if it's all included as much as possible in a connected fashion. And I know it's hard to do always, um, but whenever I can do it, I will try to do it. This approach does take time, but I find it is such a useful experience. It's a great learning experience and my students just love it. They really enjoy doing it. The song that I'll be demonstrating this technique with is called Mockingbird by Eminem. And for those of you who know Eminem, you'll know that he is a rapper from most popular in the 90s and 2000s, I think. Uh, So this is a bit of an older song, uh, but it does tend, it does have some piano parts in it. So it wasn't a complete write-off. You can't teach every single pop song that a student wants to learn uh, in this way. It really depends on the musical content and you'll have to be a judge of that. But don't write off rap or hip hop just because of its style or genre. There are quite musical elements to this music and you'll hear it today. I'll also be giving you a step-by-step plan of action of how you can teach this. And in fact, you're going to love today's freebie download because it is a one-page cheat sheet for teaching a song by ear. Just going through the steps that I'm talking about today in a really handy, easy reference. So you can have this on your piano or just next to your piano and you could actually take a student through this process. It's great when a student brings in a song and says, I really want to learn this, or you ask them that great question that I love asking my students, is there a pop song that you want to learn at the moment? Let's just try learning a part of it. Then you could just grab out this sheet and literally just step by step through it. Uh, So I hope that's helpful for you. You'll be able to grab that download. It's all free at timtopham.com slash episode 107. As I mentioned, the original recording, which I'm going to be playing, is a Facebook Live video as part of my repertoire rap series. So that's a series of six videos that I did earlier this year. This is 2017, uh, all about great repertoire choices for students. So I'm sitting at the piano and demonstrating these. Um, I do some fun classical pieces in one of them. In another one, there's a two-part series on uh, great pop music arrangements because they are often hard to find. So if you want to use the music rather than what we're doing today, which is playing by ear, then have a listen to or have a watch of those videos too. Uh, What else do I talk about? Oh, great new age music for teenagers, that kind of repetitive minimalist music they like. I give you some book recommendations for that too. So because this was a live video, you will hear me saying hi to people and answering questions. Uh, So I just wanted to make that clear up front. And the sound will sound a little bit different to the microphone I'm using now because it was recorded through my iPhone. So apologies, there's a little bit of a difference there. And if you hear any funny creaking sounds, it's actually my piano bench, so don't get too worried. If you'd like to watch the video, then you can actually watch this uh, and me playing this and demonstrating it at the piano, uh, you can head to, head to the show notes where we've embedded a version of the video that I originally took on Facebook. Okay, so without uh, any more conversation, let's get straight into today's episode, how to teach and simplify a pop song for a student to learn by ear. You'll hear me demonstrating the full process and I'll come back to you right at the end just to give you a few little reminders. Hi again, everyone. It's Tim Topham here with another Facebook Live repertoire wrap. So these are my overviews of, you know, some of the stuff that I'm doing with my students in regard to music that they want to learn um, and some of the best books that are out there that I'm finding. Um, So as you come on the call, uh, as usual, just uh, say hi, let us know where you're from, uh, and we'll get started with the, uh, the main bit of content. Today is a little bit different to what I've been doing with some of the other repertoire apps where we've been looking at actual music books. Today instead, I thought we'd take a different tack because I literally last week had a student come to me with uh, one of these uh, pop songs that he wanted to learn. Uh, And so I wanted to actually, rather than look at music, I want to give you some skills and some ideas about how you can teach a pop song, any pop song, without any music at all. Uh, So it's like a take on the repertoire rap without the repertoire uh, written anyway. (laughs) So it's a little bit different today. I hope it's going to be really useful for you. Uh, And um, we're actually going to be looking at a piece called um, Mockingbird by Eminem. So uh, this Eminem, if you're unfamiliar with him, was quite a popular rapper in, uh, when would it have been? Probably the 90s, I guess. Uh, and he's made a lot of quite interesting music. 
And, and what you find with rap music, and you, I mean, a, a lot of piano teachers would just go, there's nothing I can teach in rap music. Um, well, I take a slightly different tack because with rap music, there tends to always be some kind of, well, no, it's not true. Uh, in certain rap artists' repertoire, there tends to be some part of the music which is musical, and then they rap over the top of it. But often there's, you know, chunks like a chorus that might have some chords in it. So uh, that's the kind of piece that we're going to look at today. G'day Maggie, I can see that you've joined. Um, as you come on the call, just say hi and uh, let me know where you're from. And uh, as uh, the call progresses, if you've got anyone that you think would be would find it really helpful to know a little bit more about how to teach a pop song with no music, then please share this with your friends so that they can find it as well. Uh, okay, so as usual, I've put a couple of notes um, at timtopham.com slash rap, R-A-P. Uh, but given that this is a little bit of a different session, there's not so many links to music and things like that. But if you have missed or you're interested in any of the previous ones I've done, so we talked about in the very first repertoire rap, we talked about uh, pop music arrangements and books that I recommend that sound actually, actually sound good and the kids want to play. So that was number one. And two weeks ago, we did a uh, session on great music for adults and teenagers, the new age film kind of music. So if you're interested in that, and you've got students who play that kind of music, then check out Repertoire Rap number two. All the links are all at my blog, or you can just head to timsoffman.com slash rap. Okay, so let me play you a little bit of this, this song that this student wanted to learn. Hello, Laura from, um, from the USA. So what I tend to do, if a student comes in and says, I really want to play this song, then if, I've, if we've got the time, and I tend to try and always make the time, then the first thing we do is actually jump on YouTube, which I've got over here on my computer, and have a listen to the song. So that's what I'm going to do with you right now. So this is exactly what I would do in a piano lesson with a student. And this is what I did with my student the other day. So I type, literally typed into Google the name of the song, uh, sorry, into YouTube, and let's have a listen to the first part. Can you just give me a thumbs up if you can hear that music okay? I can always uh, turn it up or just, just leave a comment there. Um, hopefully you were able to hear it. It's um, It's got a little chordal piano riff behind it. So I thought, woohoo, okay, we're, we're, <laughs> we're heading in the right direction already. So this is something that we could potentially teach the student. I listened to it for probably, I don't know, a couple of minutes with the student and we worked out that it sounded like it didn't change at all. It just has maybe four chords in it, which, as you know, the more you explore pop music isn't a huge surprise to most people. So, step number one, listen to the song with your student. Don't worry about using lesson time to do this as well. It's, it's great because you can find out what the music's like, you can get an idea of whether it's something that you could teach, and you know, it's, it's, it's okay to use a lesson like this. Students like to see that you're engaging with it, they like to see that one, you're open to learning some other things, uh, sorry, helping them learn things. Number two, you're happy to learn some new things with them as well. So uh, like, this is totally okay. Uh, we're not gonna spend the whole lesson doing it, but part of the lesson, totally cool. So we've had a listen to it. The second question, I want you to almost write this down somewhere. If you're teaching a pop song, the most important question to ask a student is, which part would you like to learn? Which part would you like to learn? This is crucial because I've had so many times when a student will want to learn a pop song, but the bit that they want to learn is actually just the, the riff of the chorus or a bit near the end or something. It's not necessarily going to be the beginning. Uh, a classic example where it is the beginning, of course, was the song that everyone wanted to learn. That Coldplay riff, right? Now that's a classic one, start of the song, uh, lots of kids know how to play that. It's fun, fun to play, right? I know how to play it. I could pull it out at any stage. And that's what I like being able to have my students do too. But it might not be at the beginning of the song. So just ask the student, which part would you like to learn? And make sure you go to that next, okay? So that's step two. Step three, you've really then got some options. 
how are you actually going to help the student learn this song? And you've got three kind of choices here. We can learn it by ear, we could learn it by the sheet music, or we could learn it by the chord progression using a chord chart of some sort. So for today, we're actually gonna do it by ear because this is a completely repetitive pattern. Uh, it's actually got a piano part over the top of it, but the chord progression, we should be able to work out by ear. All right, so let's go into that now and let me show you what I actually did with the student. So let's just hear it again. And I want you to start listening for the bass line. And this is what is the magic behind uh, how you can use pop music and connect that to oral work. Uh, if if you, you're thinking about a holistic way of teaching, oral work should be part of everything that you do in a lesson. Try to, try to avoid, you know, at the end of a lesson going, okay, so what interval is that? Or what interval is that? You know, things like that, it's just so disconnected for students. Um, that it becomes meaningless and it just becomes that kind of little add-on that you chuck on at the end, when it shouldn't be, of course. For students, oral and listening and singing should be part of everything that they do. So this is where pop can be really, really helpful. Give us a thumbs up if this is making sense. All right, here we go. I'm going to play it again, and I want you to listen out for the bass line. Everyone gave me a heart or a thumbs up before, so I'm gathering you can hear it okay. I'll turn it up a touch. Listen to the bass line, and can you hum the bass line? And I will do this with my students. Here we go. First note yet? Uh, find that note on the piano. Here it is. <laughs> right, so if you're listening, now as much as you for us as trained professionals to be able to do this, right? It's something that students have to develop a skill in doing. And finding the baseline of a song tends to be one of the hardest mm -hmm. things to do because they're gonna hear his singing, right? They're gonna hear whatever's up at the top part of the piano, the melodic ideas. They're gonna hear. Uh, what is it? they're going to want to hum back to you but of course that's not going to help us find the chords we need to find that bass line down low so we've got to help turn on their ears to doing this there's a whole lot of ways we can do this and there are skills that we can give them to get better at hearing bass lines but this is where we where we need to start so i say to the student can you hum the home note hum that first note what is it and can you play it let's match it on the piano okay we've got our first note so let's have another listen. Where does it go then? Does it go down or does it go up? So here's the main note. Yeah. And which way does it go? Uh, it goes down. So we can try and get them to hum. Where does it go? Um, it goes down to here. So we've got an E, C, and then where does it go? And it goes back to the top. So we've got... And just getting the student to vocalise that. or da, da, doesn't really matter what symbol they use or what vocal sound they use. But just getting them to sing out loud and then try and match that on the piano such a golden way of getting this connection between practical piano playing and listening. And that's what we want, isn't it? Yeah. So this is the step that I took with my students. So we found, here's the rhythm and the bass line. We play it down a little bit lower. So it's got that. So what do we add next? Well, it's a pop song, right? So it's based on chords. So we need to add some chords. So I'll say to my student, all right, well, let's find the first chord. We know the root note is an E. So what's your guess? It's an E chord, right? Uh, does this song sound happy or sad? It's a pretty sad song, right? So why don't we try an E minor chord? All right, let's try that. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. So we're starting to get somewhere. And with all uh, pop music style playing on the piano, I tend to stick the chord just around or below middle C. It sounds kind of more rich in that part of the piano, so here rather than up here. And left hand's just a single bass note if the student is small, or you could use octaves if the student is a little bit higher. Uh, Laura, any tips for, for shy students who will be reluctant to sing? Look, I've, I've actually had a lot of this, Laura. It's a really great question. Um, yet yeah, the, the strategy is just to do it all the time. It's just make it a normalised part of the teaching that you're doing. I've actually only changed doing more singing with my students in the last, probably in the last year or two due to the discussions I've been having and the things I've been learning online and in my community. So... Uh, what happens is it becomes a little bit more more normalised the more you do it. So just just do a lot of singing, and the kids will groan and mumble. I've got a lot of teenage boys that I teach. Uh, there, it's, it's just it's become normal. So the more you do it, the more it will just become something that happens in your music lesson. And remember that if you can get kids singing, particularly if they can vocalise a rhythm, da 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 da, you know, even without singing it, da. Da, 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 ba, ba. You know, vocalising rhythms like that can really help these kind of things sink into their heads and into their ears and brains before they even try to play it. So it really, really does help. Good to see Yolanda as well on the call. Hello. All right. So we've got the first chord in the bass line. So we can start playing along to the track. So let's push play again. And I'm going to play the first chord and the bass line. Here we go. Okay. And so you get, get the idea we've started to build a little bit of a framework around this song. Admittedly, this isn't the most interesting of pop songs, but if your student wants to learn it, well, fantastic. Let's let's go with it, right? It could just be that hook that keeps them wanting to learn for forever, potentially. So, so you know, go with this. All right. So we have picked out the first chord and we've got the bass line. We need to work out the other chords, right? So the next note is C. So what chord should we put with it? Well, let's put a C major chord with it. around the next chord, we've got the note D, we could either use a D minor or major, is minor, not sure that sounds right, I think that sounds better, and then I think it just goes back to the E minor, so you know what, I actually think this is a three chord song, here we go. This one's a three chord pop song. I'm going to press play. I'm going to play along with those three chords. Here we go. Here we go. E this song. I don't think it actually does anything else other than these three chords. E minor, C major, and D major. Beautiful, right? The Creative Piano Teaching Podcast is proudly supported by The Inner Circle, the world's leading professional development and training community for piano teachers. Inner Circle members get access to an extensive library of courses, teaching videos, lesson plans and downloads that cover everything you need to know not only to teach piano creatively and inspire students of all ages and abilities, but also to support you in building and growing your own studio. On top of that, you get access to our monthly online masterminds, exclusive member discounts on products, services, software and sheet music, plus our active community forums where you not only get advice and input from me, but also from hundreds of fellow piano teachers and my hand-picked team of experts from around the world. If you're serious about expanding your teaching repertoire, learning the best strategies to motivate and inspire students while growing a thriving studio, the Inner Circle is the place to be. Find out more at timtopham.com slash community and use the code PIANOPODCAST to take $100 off an annual subscription locked in for the life of your membership. Okay, 
Now, we've got kind of that framework, but it's not going to be very interesting for very long for the students. So we probably want to listen for, there is a bit of piano, melodic piano in the right hand. I'll, I'll go back to the beginning, see if you can pick it out. Yeah. Did you hear that? Let's just have one more listen. And then we're going to try and play it. We're going to sing it first, of course, aren't we? So, if your students would be reluctant to sing, sing along with them. Try and get them to vocalise whatever it is that they want to play. It's not too hard. Connect, start connecting theory and technique with what you're doing as well because this, this piece is in E minor, right? So as piano teachers, we know that there should, should be an F sharp in this piece somewhere, right? So for a student that's trying to play what they just sang, the chances are they'll firstly go straight for white notes. If they're listening, they'll of course go, hang on a sec, that something doesn't sound right here. And this is where we can talk about scales and key signatures, because really to enable us to be able to easily play a pop song that we hear on the piano, uh, on the um, on YouTube, we need to know the scale of the key of the piece is in, right? Because that's going to make things easier. We're going to be able to remember and work out where the sharps are. So this is when I'd stop and say to the student, okay, well, what key is this in? Well, it starts and seems to finish and sounds really set at home on E minor. So I think this is E minor. So depending on where your student's at with level, if they know how to play the E minor scale, they should probably play it a few times now and get used to it. You can also, of course, check out the circle of fifths. I always have this on my piano. The circle of fifths is a great way of showing the interrelationship between all the chords in a particular key. So if I pop over here to uh, E minor, I can see that the most closely related chord is the relative major, that's G major, which we're not using in this case. And then over to its left, we've got C major and A minor, we are using C major. And then again to the right, we've got D major and B minor. So the three chords that Eminem is using in this, E minor, is the tonic. Uh, we've got D major and we've got C major, the two chords either side on the circle of fifths. This is why a little bit of theory with this can be really, really helpful. So we can start making those connections between the scale of E minor and the fact that we need to put an F sharp in. <laughs> and I've just noticed your note, I, my piano instructor from college would be keeling over if she heard this. Fantastic, I love, love that, <laughs> I love that. With the F sharp in, we're, we're sounding like we're in the right key now. This is good. So, if I play this, we've got a couple of things we can play. We can play the chords. And I'm using inversions, but if I use uh, just reposition, it would sound like this. And then maybe we could play the bass line and do the right hand melody. part to that little right hand melody. So you can keep exploring this with your student. Well, what does the melody do next? Can we work it out by ear? Again, this kind of cross relationship between listening, singing, the theory of the scale of the keys and the chords, this is why I'm so passionate about pop music. It, it opens up so many doors of way, pathways of connecting both with students and with the theory and the oral and all that kind of stuff that so often just gets left when you're looking at just pure repertoire, so often just gets left as something else that you do later on. So I really, this is the nuts and bolts of why I love doing this kind of thing with students. Now, 
I'm going to say it again because I know there were quite a few comments after my first one when I did the uh, first repertoire rap talking about pop music arrangements, right? I don't advocate a diet of pure pop for any student, right? This is just a segment of a lesson, a part of a lesson, a way to capture their enthusiasm, a way to keep them hooked. This is what it's all about, okay? Um, and as I can see there's a couple of comments here about uh, playing by ear, yeah. It, every, <laughs> every ear player I know wants to learn to read and every classical player wants to play by ear. Well, look, uh, let's give our students the ability to do both we should be creating well-rounded individuals, right? If we can maybe stick with the classical repertoire and all that stuff that we're already doing and the technique as part of our lesson, and then add a whole lot of oral, ear, listening, singing, chord playing as the second part of the lesson, we're gonna be creating far better um, musicians. And they're gonna love it, but trust me, they're gonna love this, right? Okay, so we've listened to it. We'll just go through the steps that we're talking about here. First thing to do, listen, to the song on YouTube with your student in the lesson, just the first part, or whichever bit they want to learn, because that's the second question. Which bit do you want to learn? Ask them that very question. And go to that segment of the song and then listen to that. Step three is how are you going to learn this? Are you going to, and there's three parts to this as well. I'm getting confused here. Uh, we're up to step three, and there's three parts to step three. So the three parts are, are we going to learn it by ear? Are we going to learn it by chords or are we going to learn it with the sheet music? So we've taken, today we've taken the path of learning by ear. Now, there's no problem with you jumping on Google and typing in the name of the song. So in this case, Eminem, Mockingbird, Piano Sheet. That's what I type into Google. And what's the first thing that will come up? Tends to be music notes, all right? And you'll be able to preview the first page. That will give you the chord symbols above the melody. And in fact, in the case of this, and I've put a link at timtopham.com slash rap, uh, I've put a link to the actual music notes sheet here. Uh, all right, so that can be a great reference. And Kirsten, um, it's uh, Kristen. Yeah, Kristen, hello. Good to see you on the call. Uh, you, you're absolutely right. There's nothing stopping us using all three methods. And quite often, just to confirm what I'm hearing is right, I'll find the sheet music on music notes, that first page, and just check I've got the chord symbols right. Uh, or if I need some help, you know, use that first page. It's a free preview. You don't have to pay for anything. And it might just be the bit that the student wants to learn and gets you started. So we've got learning by ear. We've got learning with the sheet music. And we've got learning with chord symbols. So if you were to type Eminem Mockingbird Chords, there's probably two sites that will come up. One is guitar, what's it called? Ultimate Guitar. And the other is E chords, E dash chords. Uh, and both of these will give you the lyrics to the song with the chord symbols above. That's called a chord chart. So that's another way to get the chords. But look, I love it. If you've got, if you can spare 10, 15 minutes, doing it orally is of a huge benefit to your student and will really improve their skills in so many areas of their playing. So is this all making sense so far? Can you give me a little heart if, if this is helpful? <laughs> and if it's making sense, if you've got any questions, please pop a question in the box. I'll do my best to answer it. Okay, so we've got up to step four. And step four was to actually try and play what we hear. Uh, and that's what we've just done then. So we've played the chords. And we did the melody idea. So that's step four, is to try and work out what's actually being played. Now, we could at that stage, thanks Biff, we could at that stage finish. I mean, that, that could be, maybe that's all we've got time for. That's totally cool because the student can then go along, go home and play along to YouTube. If you've got more time and it's perhaps a teenager or an adult and you've got a longer lesson, then what I would say to do is then do a little arrangement of it. So get them to think outside the, I've got to just play along to YouTube and think, can I make this actually my own piece of music? And there are a few simple ways to do this if you've never done it before. Uh, the most simple would be to move the chords and the ideas around the piano. So I think for my student who we actually did this song with just last week, uh, what I did is I suggested he could start 
maybe up, maybe at the top of the piano. So we, he could do something like. Um, Maybe you could do a little bit of... So what am I doing here? Well, I'm using the E minor scale to do a little improv over the chords in my left hand, the chords from the song. to uh, a little bit of knowledge of scales and the key that they're working in and an ability to play something while the left hand's been consistent with the chord progression, they can create a whole arrangement of this song. I reckon this is, like, this, this is, this is musical, right? This is some of the most musical stuff that you could do with a student. So that's step five. I don't want to spend too much longer on this because I think 30 minutes is a really good chunk of information and uh, I've got far more information about this uh, in the course that I've created on pop music, which I'll tell you about in just a second. But let's just recap one more time. First thing, uh, listen to the song, ask which bit they want to learn, work out how you're going to learn it, chords, music, uh, or, a comp or oral or, or a combination of all of them. Play the main components of the song and then... Do it a little arrangement. It doesn't have to be long or complex. Uh, and get the student moving around the piano. And if they can move between chords and playing kind of melodic ideas, fantastic. I also, just as an aside, love teaching my students to, uh, or sorry, love encouraging my students to sing along. If it's a pop song and your student, you, you reckon you could encourage them to do it, get them to sing along because we all know how hard rhythm in pop music can be. If it's meant to be sung and we try and play it, it's incredibly difficult. So the easiest thing is to not try and play it, but actually get the student to sing along. Now, that, that's, that can be a big leap for some students, but I've also been incredibly surprised by when I put a little bit of pressure on how when a student actually opens up with a bit of confidence, how beautiful their voice is. Uh, and I'll be sharing more of these ideas uh, later this year, in in fact, in May, I'm going to be focusing the whole month on my blog and my podcast on pop music. And I'm going to be also talking in April, so next month, about the pop recital showcase that I did. Thanks to Kristen Yost, actually, and the podcast that we did, uh, I did a pop showcase recital and I got a number of my boys to sing songs and it was absolutely brilliant, really, really good. And if I hadn't suggested it, none of them probably would have done it. So get your kids singing as much as you can. I think it's a really great thing to do. G'day, Tom, Donald. Nice to have you on the uh, on the call from the UK as well. People from all over the world. Totally love it. All right. So let me just wrap up by saying I've actually created an eight-part course on pop music. It pretty much goes from if you've never taught a chordal approach, chord progression, circle of fifths, um, pop songs, if you've never taught any of that stuff before, then I start with a crash course in chords, a crash course in pop, and go through uh, how to create arrangements with your students, how to simplify pop music that's too hard, how to use lead sheets and chord charts, the whole lot. It's an eight-part video series. It's all as a part of my membership. If you're interested in that, you can head to timtoppum.com slash community and you can get full access to that whole course and all my other courses, the blues course, 
I've got a, a new beginners teaching beginners course coming out uh, this month, so lots and lots of stuff there. I'm just going to check out. We've got a question from Jack here. Do you ever veto song choices just because they'd sound awful? However, well, you try to arrange it. A lot of rap music, my kids. Uh, like just doesn't seem to work so well. Uh, yeah, Jack, I do sometimes, and that's why the first step is always let's have a listen to it on YouTube. Um, what I find is that mm, I can only think of maybe one student who literally only ever listens to rap that, and I couldn't really work with any of it. Nine times out of ten, a student that might like a rap song, if you ask them, will also like music some other piece of music that has more potential. So in answer to your question, yes, I do veto songs. I try not to, but if they're really not going to get anything out of it and it doesn't have the musical and the pedagogical benefit, then there's not a lot of point in pursuing with it. I just say, just enjoy listening to it. It's totally cool. But what else do you like listening to? And uh, get them to come back with a list uh, of a few songs or email you during the week or something with a few ideas. All right, I'm about to wrap up. So if you've got any final questions, uh, pop a question in the box there. And, of course, if you're watching the replay of this, feel free to ask questions either here on Facebook or on my blog where you can find more details uh, about all of these repertoire sessions that I'm doing uh, at timtopham.com slash rap, R-A-P, R-A-P. Now, if this has been helpful for you, please click the share button. I love um, as many teachers as possible to know about this. Um, as you know, and as you can tell, I'm really passionate about the potential for adding a little bit of pop music to your studio, particularly if a student comes to you wanting to play something. Uh, and that's the main, re the main reason I do it. I don't often go to a lesson with a student and go, hey, let's learn this pop song, because of course it's a very personal choice. So be open and let students know that, yeah, they can bring something in and you'll be happy to help them uh, with it. And I think you'll get a lot out of it like I've shown you today. So I hope those five points have been really, really helpful. Uh, Laura, last question here. What about using YouTube tutorials with the student? Uh, yeah, YouTube tutorials, fantastic. Uh, I don't have any problems with students using them. I don't use them with my students though, so I would never do that together in a lesson. However, if they've gone off and learned a song on a YouTube tutorial, what I'll tend to do when they come back is give them some feedback about how they're playing it. And if they're able to play it fairly successfully, then have a listen to it along with the original recording. I would then encourage them, could they sing instead of playing along? And the next kind of step then, if they've learnt it, is to use your musical knowledge and experience to help them create a piano arrangement of it that they might not have got from the YouTube tutorial, which often just kind of teaches you the basics of it. Uh, so that's that's kind of my approach there. And we know that students are, are loving YouTube tutorials. Please don't ban them from doing it or anything like that or discourage it. It's totally cool and it could just be the thing that keeps teenagers and adult students playing, particularly when they're beginners. So it's, you know, YouTube tutorial, tutorials are not the devil. <laughs> they're great. Uh, of course, you know, we can do so much more in lessons with them, but if that's keeping them playing and practicing, totally fine with me. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. I do hope this has been helpful for you. As I say, please use the share button uh, if you've got a chance. Uh, give me a thumbs up or a, uh, a heart if you'd like to um, to share that with me. And the next repertoire wrap, so in two weeks' time, I'm going back to books and we're going back to late beginner uh, early intermediate music, no, probably like beginner music actually, around preliminary grade one music here. I'm going to show you some of my best choices, the music that kids just totally love that you probably won't find in the repertoire, uh, sorry, exam books and things like that. So I hope that's really useful. I'll see you in two weeks' time. Thank you very much for joining me today. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and found some value in it. And really, for a, a, an exercise like this, if you've never done it before, then as I always say with these kinds of things, just pick one student who this might work with or a student who uh, perhaps has a little bit more time because they're not under so much pressure for exam work or auditions coming up or something. So a student that perhaps has uh, some more time in their schedule or it's the first lesson after a big recital and you've got a little bit more free time, then try this out with them. And if you would like to get a little bit more practice in before the student arrives, then 
ask them for some suggestions of songs that they might like to play in this way uh, at a previous lesson and get them to email or send you those suggestions during the week so that you can actually prepare for it. I'm quite comfortable doing this live with students uh, because I actually enjoy the process and I think the student enjoys the process of watching me work out how I'm doing things. Um, but if you would like to prepare first, then that's all you need to do. Just say to whatever student it is, hey, can you just email me? I just want just three pop songs or film music or whatever it is that you'd really like to play. And um, we're going to work on a next lesson for a part of the lesson. Now, don't forget your freebie download and all our links for today available at timtopham.com slash episode 107. And as I mentioned, we've got that one page cheat sheet. It's a really handy reference for you if this is completely new to you that you can have on standby so you're not going to be feeling lost about the approach that you take. Thanks to everyone who has recently left reviews on Facebook and iTunes. I really appreciate all the great comments that I've been receiving and I do read them all. Thank you so much. Find out how you too can support the work that I'm doing through this podcast by leaving a review. The instructions of how to do it are at timtopham.com slash review and I would so appreciate it if you are a regular listener of the show and you're getting value from it. If you could leave me a review, I would really appreciate it. Okay, next week on the podcast, and we're getting another angle on playing by ear, this time from Kristen Jensen. And she's a piano teacher, curriculum developer, and author of the popular piano magic system. I'm sure we'll hear about that some more. She's got great ideas about playing by ear and improvising and the links between and how it all works. I can't wait to share it with you. Stay tuned next week. Until then, bye-bye. We'll conclude this evening's entertainment. Oh, thank you. Thanks for listening to the Creative Piano Teaching Podcast. We'd love to help take your teaching to the next level as a member of our supportive community. Use the coupon Piano Podcast for $100 off an annual membership of Tim's Inner Circle today. To find out more, head to timtopham.com forward slash community.